President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin. Putin. Excellency, Mr. President, dear colleagues, dear friends, I would like to report that yesterday we had an annual session of the BRICS Business Council that brought together six presidents. And we adopted the annual report that reflects the outcome of the work for the past year, as well as topical suggestions for BRICS work to further deepen market integration, trade and economic cooperation in our grouping. This document will be provided to BRICS heads of state at the summit in Kazan. Today we hold another BRICS forum, business forum, that is a key event in our work. The agenda of the forum brought together over thousands of representatives of business communities, heads of companies, associations, entrepreneur unions and chambers of commerce and industry of BRICS countries. I suggest we discuss interaction in finance and investment, transport, logistics, agriculture, information and food security, as well as sustainable development. We also plan to congratulate the winners of the International uh, BRICS Best Practices Award and the Women's Startup Award. Mr. President, on behalf of everyone present, I thank you for your participation and I give you the floor for your introductory remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm sincerely glad to welcome all of you here at the BRICS Business Forum. The participation therein is quite high profile. Here present are leading business representatives of all BRICS states. Your companies have been long and successfully cooperating between each other. You implement key joint projects in various sectors, industry, energy, transport, infrastructure, agriculture, and digital economy. I would like to specifically note that the current forum also brought together businessmen from those countries that from January 1st have become the full BRICS members. Namely, I'm talking about our colleagues and friends from Saudi Arabia, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates. I would like to highlight that Russia, as the acting BRICS chair, by all means seeks to help integrate new members or new conscripts, sorry for this, um, into all cooperation mechanisms. And we see that the Business Council was happy to welcome businessmen from new member states. And in their turn, they actively got on board. The Russian chairship has an overall motto strengthening multilateralism from just global development and security. A meaningful action plan is put into practice. It seeks to advance partnership on three pillars, policy and security, economy, finance, culture, and people-to-people -people contacts. As of now, the plan has been fulfilled by over 80 percent. Over 200 events took place, meetings, conferences, sexual sessions. The majority of expert and ministerial meetings took place, but certainly the BRICS summit will become the centerpiece. It starts next week in the Russian city of Kazan. It is emblematic that the leaders' meeting in Kazan is preceded by the business forum, your group. Hence, we emphasize the importance of close economic partnership of your countries to advance trade and investment, to deepen cooperation ties. The joint BRICS efforts to expedite social and economic growth to ensure sustainable development yields specific tangible results. It helps in practice to improve the prosperity and living standards of rank-and-file citizens of our countries. 
and numbers are self-evident. I'm positive that certainly you know about these numbers overall, but allow me to say a thing or two about that. A BRICS aggregate GDP amounts to over 60 trillion USD. Its overall share in the global GDP strongly exceeds the relevant indicator of the so-called G7 and continues to grow. As I met publicly with your Russian colleagues, I've mentioned that and I would like to specifically highlight it once again here in this room with your participation. In 1992, G7 amounted to 45.5 percent. And the same year, BRICS countries, and I'm talking about 1992, mind you, they amounted to 16.7 percent of global GDP. Whereas now, the year 2023, our grouping amounted to 38.3 percent or rather 37.4 percent, and G7 amounted to 29.3, and the gap is broadening. It will continue to broaden. It is inevitable, and that is a totally clear dynamic. Over the past decades, on top of that, over 40 percent of global GDP growth of the whole global economic dynamics accounted for BRICS states. This year, average economic growth rate of BRICS is estimated at 4 percent, which exceeds uh, the growth rate of uh, G7 countries, which is 1.7 percent, and which exceeds world growth rates, which will be at 3.2 percent. These are their estimates. BRICS account for a fourth of global exports of goods. At the same time, companies of BRICS countries dominate many key markets, including energy, metals, and food markets. Thus, they dominate on markets of such goods without which sustainable economic development is impossible. In short, BRICS is already playing a prominent role in global eco economy of today. And this role will increase in the future. BRICS countries are, in fact, drivers of global growth. And it is BRICS that will generate the main GDP growth in the near future. The relevant development platforms are emerging within BRICS, among them communication channels, technological and educational standards, financial systems, payment instruments, and, of course, mechanisms of sustainable long-term investment. In other words, economic growth of BRICS members will depend less and less on external influence and interference. This is essentially economic sovereignty and partnership of self-sufficient economies, which will manifold strengthen the potential and open new opportunities. I'll add that, uh, that the new development bank has a special role to play in strengthening financial cooperation. It's a strong and effective structure. It possesses a solid capital base and a team of skilled experts. As the development finance institution, the new development bank uh, represents a real alternative to a great number of Western financial mechanisms, and we will continue to develop it, not uh, to use it as against uh, anyone, and we will increase its opportunities. The new development bank. Uh, should become one of the key investors in the long term in, lo in major technological infrastructure projects in BRICS and Global South. One of the key uh, issues of strengthening business partnership within BRICS uh, is to enhance transportation connectivity and to create new relevant for businesses, freight routes and corridors and modern multimodal solutions and logistics schemes. The Russia BRICS chairship has launched a regular dialogue between transport ministries on these issues, and we are developing such initiatives as the launch of uh, electronic 
coordination platform and establishment of the BRICS reinsurance pool. In the Business Council, we have established a separate subgroup on logistics, and I would like to thank uh, members of the Business Council and the uh, businessmen for supporting the concept of the permanent logistics platform. Russia is quickly redirecting its transport flows to reliable foreign partners. Our flagship projects include the Northern Sea Route and the North-South Corridor. These continental arteries are intended to provide short and economically efficient trade routes and connect large industrial, agricultural and energy and power hubs to consumer markets. We are implementing a large-scale plan to develop the Northern Sea Route. We are building up our icebreaker fleet, including nuclear-powered vessels. In order to test the routes, we have launched coastal routes. We are modernizing satellite constellations, and we are constructing new fuel terminals as well as navigation safety centers and other coastal infrastructure. We are enabling broader road and railroad access to seaports. In its turn, the North-South Transport Corridor is connecting the Russian ports at Northern Sea and in the Baltics to the terminals on the Persian Gulf and Eden Ocean. Among other things, it is a key to enabling greater cargo flow between Eurasian and African continents. We are closely cooperating with our BRICS partners in the fields of innovation and digital economy. I have just mentioned our opportunities as regards the food and energy markets, but definitely we are looking into the future. We are working to achieve certain results and indicators. We are developing e-commerce and we are implementing the Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence technologies, as well as processing of the so-called big data. And in order to deepen our cooperation in the field of industrial digitalization, we intend to launch a BRICS Center for Competencies under UNIDO. In future, we should develop a single digital infrastructure in the BRICS, and here it is crucial to make sure that business, civil society and sectoral authorities come up with a negotiated principle to the use of biometrics as well as insurance of information security. Ladies and gentlemen, we expect that Business Council will provide specific recommendations. Ladies and gentlemen, Russia is open for mutually beneficial business cooperation. We are trying to put in place friendly and globally competitive environment for local and foreign business in order to attract capital and technologies, primarily in cooperation with you. Let me stress once again that our shared efforts should be primarily focused on the development and strengthening of our own platforms that enable economic growth. I'm talking about technological solutions, financial and investment mechanisms, as well as broader logistics and so on. I'm confident implementation of the BRICS potential based in particular on the high population and vast resources will bring utmost benefit to our countries, to our businesses and all of our citizens. And in conclusion, I would like to wish the participants of the Business Council fruitful deliberations, successful work and all the best. I believe and I expect that at the summit, as has been already mentioned, at the summit in Kazan, the acting president of the Business Council of BRICS will report on the results, and I hope that he will learn more about the Russian capital, Moscow, that is undoubtedly, we are proud to say this, one of the most beautiful countries of the world. It is swiftly developing international hub. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Mr. President. Our forum has received video addresses from some of the heads of state of BRICS member states. And first, I would like to share with you the video address by President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. In 
in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Your Excellency President Vladimir Putin, distinguished heads and representatives of BRICS member states, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the business community. At the outset, I would like to express my deep appreciation to the President of the Russian Federation, His Excellency Vladimir Putin, as well as Government of the Russian Federation, for their fruitful efforts to arrange and hold this forum. I thank you for your tireless efforts to develop cooperation between BRICS member states on all agenda items outlined during the prepared sessions held in different cities of Russia. This work demonstrates how deep our relations are, as well as the importance of the form format of our cooperation aimed at achievement of shared goals. We highly appreciate the BRICS Business Forum. It unites our countries and reflects our shared aspiration to further build up relations between the BRICS member states. It contributes to the development of investment activities and trade, as well as implementation of joint projects. Undoubtedly, it all helps us intensify our efforts in order to meet the aspirations of our peoples and achieve additional economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, this forum is taking place at a time when we are witnessing challenges and crises in the world. Most recent international conflicts and unprecedented events require joint efforts from all of us. Not only do we need to provide swift solutions to modern challenges, we also turn to the sustainable development. It is our shared responsibility. Apart from participation of top officials, it implies involvement of private sector and businesses who are indispensable partners in this field. Therefore, this forum offers a new platform for such cooperation. It makes it possible for us to jointly explore various fields of investment activities and trade between member states. Another shared task is to expand cooperation between sectoral institutions and private sector while taking into account the investment into competitive advantages of every country that launches specific projects aimed at deepening economic integration among BRICS countries. BRICS member states should become an important economic bloc, particularly in the field in the phase um, in the context of global economic growth. We should further develop the investment possibilities and opportunities in our countries. We are all facing particularly high demands when it comes to renewables. Digital transformation and other transformative energy sectors have become important pillars for the development of our countries. Egypt is also going down this path. I'm confident that we are on our way to economic growth and comprehensive development, which in their turn are the foundation for more sustainable economic policy. It is a key to economic resilience and ability to withstand various crises. In this context, the Egyptian government has recently undertaken several steps aimed at improving the national investment climate. The greater role of the private sector is a typical feature of this innovative approach. Economic hindrances as well as other hindrances for investment flows are one of the most important problems. We are undertaking investment reforms right now. The Egyptian government is trying to offer the private sector more opportunities, and we try to continue implementing the program suggested by our government under the law on private proper, governmental property. Apart from providing tax benefits and other stimuli, the Egyptian tax authority is revising its procedures to simplify them. Bureaucracy is still painfully felt in Egypt. We continue our struggle with it. We continue to support the communication, information technologies, and processing fields of our industry as well as in the field of green hydrogen. We are implementing the infrastructure projects in different parts of our country when it comes to transport and communication system. We try to achieve as much benefit as possible on the ground. It was probably thanks to the unique and strategically important 
position of Egypt that enabled one of the high-profile projects I'm talking about, the Suez Canal Economic Zone, which offers new investment opportunities. They are looking into the future, given the potential offered by our country. It is based on various advantages for the government and exporters. We can work with different countries of our of the world. I would like to particularly stress the geographic important position of our country in the region. Egypt becomes a better and the best entry to the African continent that has become a continent of the future. This future depends on the opportunities that we are offering together. The share of the young population in Africa amounts to 65 percent of its total population. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to express my best wishes to you. I hope that outcomes of the Business Council will contribute to great investment and deeper cooperation between among our countries. Investment into human resources are important and are one of the primary conditions for revival of our countries. Thank you very much. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah. Our forum received a video address of the Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed. I kindly ask you to turn on the address. Excellency Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, invited guests, I extend my gratitude to the Russian Federation for convening this plenary session of the BRICS business forum. BRICS countries represent nearly half of the global population and over a third of the global GDP. With such significant influence, BRICS is well positioned to make a substantial contribution to global economic growth and sustainable development. To fully realize this potential, we must actively work to ensure that global governance structures are more representative, inclusive, and responsive to the needs of developing and emerging economies. Today's international financial architecture does not fully align with the aspiration of emerging economies and falls short of supporting the acceleration of sustainable development. That's why we advocate for comprehensive reform of the global financial system to establish a more equitable framework. At the same time, BRICS itself should set an example by expanding mutually beneficial economic cooperation within its own membership, by becoming a model for economic collaboration. BRICS can serve as a standard barrier for reformed global financial system that not only address the needs of its members, but also supports the development objective of other emerging developing economies. Excellencies, Ethiopia's rapidly expanding economy presents significant opportunities for investment, economic cooperation, and trade, particularly for BRICS nations. Ethiopia is endowed with abundant natural and agricultural resources, offering access to large and diverse markets across Africa and beyond. This advantage is further strengthened by our national airline, the largest airline in Africa and a leader in international cargo and passenger transport. Additionally, our affordable and increasingly renewable energy infrastructure, coupled with a young, skilled, and trainable workforce, positions Ethiopia as an attractive destination for investment. In recent years, we have implemented bold economic reforms aimed at making our economy even more business friendly. These transformative measures include the liberalization of key sectors such as telecommunications and finance. 
We have also adopted a market-based foreign exchange regime, creating more conducive environment for foreign direct investment. These changes are designed to ensure that Ethiopia is well equipped to compete in the global market and to offer significant returns for investors. In this context, we strongly encourage investors from BRICS countries to seize the opportunities available in Ethiopia, particularly in sectors such as manufacturing, agriculture, renewable energy, mining, ICT, and tourism. These industries hold enormous potential for growth and innovation. And by investing in these areas, BRICS countries can benefit from Ethiopia's strategic position as a gateway to the African continent while contributing to our shared development objectives. Excellencies, Ethiopia is firmly committed to the implementation of the 2025 strategy for BRICS economic partnership, which seeks to promote sustainable development across its economic, social, and environmental dimensions in an integrated and balanced manner. This strategy aligns with Ethiopia's own development goals, particularly as we work towards industrialization, food security, and environmental resilience. As the global economy continues to face challenges such as growing inequality, rising prices, and unemployment, it is essential that the BRICS business community collaborates to develop strategies that mitigate this spillover effect. Ethiopia stands ready to contribute to this effort. In closing, let us embrace the opportunity before us with a spirit of unity, determination, and shared sense of purpose. Together, BRICS member states can achieve remarkable progress and build future marked by shared prosperity, sustainable development, and economic resilience for our people. I thank you. We also received a video address of the President of the Republic of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa. I kindly ask you to turn on the video address. Your Excellency, President Vladimir Putin, fellow BRICS leaders, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor to address the BRICS Business Forum as it meets to expand and diversify trade and investment between our countries. As a formation, BRICS has an important role in the world. It has the potential to drive significant change in the global economy and international relations. The historic expansion of BRICS creates further opportunities to foster robust trade and development cooperation. The expanded BRICS group now covers 43% of the world's population. The group together accounts for 27% of global GDP and a fifth of world exports. The opportunities for cooperation and economic progress are immense. The BRICS Business Council has a crucial role in expanding trade between BRICS countries. As governments, we are committed to support the work of business. We look forward to the BRICS report of finance ministers and central bank governors to the BRICS summit on the strengthening of correspondent banking networks between BRICS countries and enabling settlements in local currencies. As the global economy undergoes far-reaching technological change, BRICS countries must create a collaborative environment for advancement of digital technology. E-commerce in particular has great potential to enhance market access and economic growth. 
we support the call for international rules and standards on issues such as cross-border taxation and data privacy. South Africa is ready to play its part in realizing the economic potential of BRICS. In the midst of an improved economic outlook for South Africa, growth forecasts for the next two years have been revised upwards. Our newly elected government of national unity has prioritized structural economic reform, massive investment in infrastructure, and improving the business operating environment for businesses. South Africa has a diverse economic base with developed industries in areas such as manufacturing and services. We have sophisticated financial services, world-class infrastructure, and abundant natural resources. We call on fellow BRICS countries to participate in the growth of South Africa and indeed the rest of the African continent. The African continental free trade area is unlocking massive opportunities for trade, investment and industrial growth. The African continent is looking for partnerships that will unlock the dynamism and the potential of its 1.3 billion people. South Africa is home to a population that is young, digitally connected and increasingly urbanized. Investment in skills development is growing a workforce that will make the African continent an engine of production and growth well into the future. The success of the African continental free trade area that we are seeing now requires a substantial investment in infrastructure. We therefore call on fellow BRICS countries to partner with us to build the roads that are needed, the ports for exports and imports, the rail lines, the energy and the telecommunications networks that will enable Africa to industrialize and to be able to trade with other countries in the world. To ensure that the benefits of the African continental free trade area are spread across African countries, we need to ensure that small, medium-sized enterprises, as well as women-owned and managed businesses, receive focused support and financing. I commend the BRICS Business Council, the respective ministers from various countries who have worked very hard, as well as their respective officials, and indeed all business leaders for the excellent work to build an effective and dynamic economic network. Now to the delegates, I'm certain that your participation in this BRICS Business Forum will in the end produce great results so that you are able to move from contact to contract and be able to engage in beneficial as well as profitable business enterprises. I am certain that this business forum will help to catapult BRICS economies to a much higher level where there will be equity as well as accelerated growth. And that it will further increase the standing of BRICS countries in the world's economy is a given. It's something that we must ensure that it happens. So, colleagues, I wish you all the best in your deliberations, and I thank you for this opportunity of being able to address you. Thank you.
Dear colleagues, the next address was received at short notice. I kindly ask our Russian-speaking audience to use the devices for simultaneous interpretation. I kindly ask you to turn on the video address of the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, President Masoud Bezeshkian. In the name of Allah, most merciful, most gracious, Your Excellency, President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, distinguished heads and members of the BRICS Business Council, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset I would like to thank distinguished President of Russia and the organizers of this important session. It gives me great pleasure to address heads and members of BRICS in a video format. The Business Council is one of the important initiatives in the development of trade and economic cooperation among members, one of the important pillars to develop friendly relations and integration trade opportunities uh, and uh, to create a diverse economic uh, network in order to meet our mutual needs. Dear guests, from the point of view of Iran, BRICS reflects uh, the main effective procedures uh, that meet the requests of the international community to move uh, towards uh, multilateral production uh, capacities, which is an example of a balanced cooperation today. The Islamic Republic of Iran believes uh, br that BRICS partners are its strategic partners. The use of large economic and trade opportunities is playing a key role in economic development, in improving organizational and financial and economic structures. BRICS creates the basis for expanding mutual trade and has a good influence on international affairs. A large part of population Vast territory and larger economies are represented by BRICS, and that's why BRICS is the voice of uh, the global majority. The BRICS Business Council sets uh, out uh, key prospects like strengthening collective uh, cooperation, uh, strengthening continuity, and diversification of trade and uh, easier access of uh, cooperation uh, actors uh, to each other, uh, meeting uh, needs and creating uh, beneficial and enabling opportunities. The geographic situation of BRICS uh, provides uh, all the good opportunities uh, for bilateral and multilateral cooperation, and uh, it provides all the good opportunities. Uh, I'm sure that uh, it, it could have uh, a good uh, influence and uh, it could strengthen our cooperation. First, the issue of uh, using dollar and instrumentalization of this currency to control or to weaken the position of countries in the world. Fortunately, Countries have established the necessary cooperation to use other currencies, and this process is ongoing. It is no secret to anyone that an important role is to be played by facilitating trade and by investing opportunities. This process will have a direct impact on strengthening economic cooperation. The second, the use of sanctions and the use of this anti-humane, illegitimate method in international trade. Countries uh, that uh, seek uh, to maintain their dominance uh, strengthen their sanctions and they block finance with regard to other countries uh, and they take actions against individuals and legal persons uh, to, uh, to undermine uh, interstate relations. The next, your country can become the next target of their sanctions. The use of sanctions has uh, 
a negative effect on human rights, and it was condemned by BRICS countries, and the countries uh, have uh, many times uh, condemned the use of such practice, and they called for suspension of such uh, unilateral actions. Sanctions harm uh, peoples and countries, but they also are detrimental to a wide uh, number of countries, other countries. It, it could have a psychological negative impact on them. It could de deprive them of opportunity to develop trade freely. It could uh, result into price hikes uh, in unemployment and might have uh, a negative uh, impact on people. It's all the results of sanctions. and. Uh, it might uh, the aspiration to meet all the negative impacts of sanctions uh, leads to the initiatives and measures taken by BRICS at the moment. Fourth, uh, we call on the BRICS uh, Business uh, Council uh, to make investments and uh, to develop investment cooperation and to qualitatively increase uh, trade between countries as well as to facilitate and to increase international travel between entrepreneurs, investors, and uh, representatives of uh, industrial companies. Uh, it requires uh, abolition of visas between BRICS countries. Apart from increasing trade relations, this issue, which is uh, serious, might uh, result into an increase uh, and enhancement of tourism sector as well as cultural and people-to-people -people contacts. We also must uh, use uh, the BRICS structure in order to fulfill our goals and targets. Difference. The Islamic Republic of Iran, given its um, location and um, possessing ample energy resources and opportunities in terms of science, engineering, and uh, manufacturing, and uh, science-intense uh, areas stands ready to take joint economic steps and stands ready to provide all the necessary preferential treatments. Iranian companies have valuable experience in providing technical and engineering services, and they have experience in implementing strategic projects. In this regard, we are ready to uh, develop partnerships uh, in different projects. We are interested in your proposals, economic uh, and commercial projects. And also, in conclusion, I thank organizers and participants of the BRICS Business Forum, and I thank you for your attention. Vladimir Putin, we are aware of your busy agenda. We understand that you have uh, other business to do. And on behalf of uh, foreign participants, I would like to thank you for your participation, for uh, attention that you give uh, to the BRICS uh, Business Council, that you support the development of entrepreneurship in our country and beyond. Uh, we would like to wish you every success in your work, and thank you again. Thank you. Just one second, please. From my part, I would like uh, to thank our colleagues uh, that have uh, made their statements and who participated online in our today's work. Soon, several days uh, later, President of uh, the United Arab Emirates will visit Moscow and I will be happy to receive him and then, as you know, Next week, I'll have a meeting with the leaders of all BRICS countries. 
I would like to join the words that were expressed uh, by my colleague and by my friend, by President Ramaphosa, when he talked about the one of the key ideas of uh, leaders of BRICS countries is uh, to support business uh, activities. In our part, we hope that thanks to your organizational talent and thanks to your entrepreneurship and thanks to your energy, your knowledge and your experience, you will make significant progress and results in your work. And together, by supporting and helping each other, we will fulfill the crucial task, which is to ensure positive movement forward, to ensure security, and finally to ensure the well-being of peoples of our countries. The BRICS is not uh, oriented against anyone. BRICS is moving towards development, sustainable development and prosperity of our countries and our peoples. I would like to thank you for your participation, for coming to Moscow. I th thank you for thinking about how uh, we are, um, how we needed to move forward, and thank you for uh, your work. And I wish you every success in your work.